such an amazing privilege to be on our platform today. This is Connecting Conversations with Cohesia Connect. Carla, one of the co-founders of Cohesia Connect. And here today, we've got Robert Douglas from Hatch Films. Robert, welcome to Connecting Conversations. An incredible privilege for us to have you on our podcast today. I think it's always best that our guests do the introductions of themselves because they know it best. So tell us a bit about you and the work that you do. And and that'll be a great start into today's conversation. Yeah, so I'm Robert Douglas, co-founder of Hatch Films. Um, And we, Hatch Films are a film production company primarily, but our whole thing is driven by uh, skills development and safe spaces. Um, and career development for people from what the film industry consider underrepresented um, in the field. So we mainly focus on global majority talent, people from low socioeconomic backgrounds, LGBTQ, um, yeah, and female females in certain roles um, are underrepresented. So we look at how we can change the industry by giving um, giving people that are normally overlooked in the industry and I'll go more into detail in in a little bit later about how what that looks like but yeah we try to give them the foundations the support the career progression that they previously haven't really been offered um, by the industry. Uh, That's not uh, a small undertaking in any shape or form Mm. I think just (laughs) acknowledging and hearing what kind of like it is that, that that your work is really motivated to do is a huge thing. And, and I think we need so much more of it. But tell us a little bit about yourself. How did you kind of get into pursuing this? This, this sounds quite specific as well in terms of really addressing, I think it's such an important issue with regard to representation in film. Yeah, no, it really is. I mean, I would probably start by saying like we um, we as Hatch Films are focused on one area. The the undertaking is huge, and we know there's some of our um, some of our colleagues that run different organisations that do a similar thing within film and TV. Um, we're all we're all holding different parts of the reins uh, to steer the horse. We're all. Um, doing things that collectively will help change. So not, um, I don't believe one of us will click and be able to change all of the issues in, you know, when it comes to um, diversity and inclusion and equity in film, but all of us together, we all champion each other. So, um, because we're all doing, we're all taking different parts of it and uh, and driving it forward. So I really came to um, co-found Hatch, my co-founder, Glenn, um, we worked together. So we worked together at a former um, film production company, a small uh, production company that had a slight um, arm of helping people. So training people, helping people enter the industry, people from low socioeconomic backgrounds, people that were unemployed, etc. cetera. Um, and I used to head up that, that training. And then my colleague used to work on the production side and the commercial side. And then that died a death in um, in the first lockdown. We were given like a week's notice and it was like, right, what do we do? Try and find a job in a lockdown and a global pandemic or do we try and uh, do something with what we know and what we love? Um, and ultimately we couldn't leave people behind. We could not leave the mission behind. We'd seen too much. We'd seen how um, complex the industry is and how it's not um, geared towards the young people that we support or the talent that we support and we just couldn't leave that behind so um hatch films was really born from from that and three years later were were still going and and doing some big things but way before that in terms of kind of supporting people and helping people develop that's been my whole career for um you know years and years and years i worked in corporate i worked in welfare uh welfare sector um helping people develop and, and move on in their careers and it was through kind of that working in those different sectors that i really saw the uh how all different sectors treat particularly people of color and my own experiences working for seven years in a very well known um, organization that is well known, industry, sorry, but it's well known for um, not being the most diverse place um, or industry to work in. So I was often the only person of color in the room, in the team, in the building. I could count on one hand the amount of um, people of color that, that kind of worked there. 
Um, and through those experiences, it really kind of led me towards supporting, being more specific in, in who I want to support and how I want to support them. Um, and that led into working in film, got rid of corporate, made the money that I wanted to make, bought a house, got married, had children. And then I was like, right, this is my time to, uh, to tap into my creative side and, and take a risk. So that's kind of how, how that all came about, really. Again, not small undertakings, particularly when you have those very defining seasons of these different responsibilities when you navigate. Like you mm. mentioned, you have a family now, it's a different demand. And yet what you, it, it sounds to me, this is not just a job that you're doing. It sounds very much like a calling that you've managed to kind of transpose into every area or season of your life. You were doing this element of mobilizing and empowering people way back yonder. It's just what you found your hands to do with whatever the tools were available or whatever the stage was given to you at the time, which I think is yeah. incredible. I guess my question at this point, I am a big lover of storytelling. This is a big part of our drive here at Keisha Connect, which is why we have the podcast and it's amplifying people's real life stories. Film is a very specific medium of storytelling. Why film for you? Um, film is really just exciting. It is um, from, I've got a creative background anyway. I, um, I, you know, worked in, I say worked, it wasn't really work. It was just volunteering and a bunch of friends. Uh, we used to um, put on shows at a pub theatre and we used to kind of semi-manage the pub theatre and do all of that kind of crazy stuff when we were we were young. So I've always kind of had this creative background. And then film is just the whole industry is exciting to me. Um, what you can, the, the stories you can tell, the messages you can get across, the um, excitement and passion that you can see through film is just incredible. And then working on a film, when you see, for example, recently we worked with, we um, worked with a new writer to make his first shot and seeing the script as an idea that he had and then it developing a full into a full script and then us be able to read that out loud to then see it on the screen when it's complete and, and we've been part of all of that process mm -hmm. there's nothing like it um it's kind of one step above you know people always say i love i love seeing a plan come together they always say that right. But this is yeah. like one step above when you've got a, a, a film that other people are enjoying and excited by and interested in. Um, mm. It's just incredible. So film is like unmatched for me. It's um, yeah, it's it's an amazing industry. I, I, I agree with you so much on that one. I think in terms of kind of the, the kind of platform that film has and its impact with storytelling is kind of second to none. I love reading books, but not everybody likes to read books. But there's more of a chance that more people will see a visual and be moved by what they see. They identify with the character, they identify with, you know, the themes within whatever is there. I, I love what you say about that. I think never have I seen it more moving to someone to see a film I remember just there are films that just make me cry and the minute it's done I just can't stop crying you know and I know many people can resonate with that yes. but there is such a power within what film is able to do in terms of showing stories from different perspectives yeah. you know and like, we're just in a digital age now that like has created so many ways in which you can amplify that and give effects to really enhance some form of showing more than one story all simultaneously at the same time. Like it's just it's so such a wide spectrum of, of brilliance in this one medium. Yeah, and it's it's kind of nuts when you're going through the filmmaking process and you kind of show up on set and you see all the different people that have come together that we've kind of put together to make this. And then you don't know what you're, you don't know, you don't think about that power or anything on while mm. you're making, while you're making it. It's, it's thought about in the writing and it's very personal to the writer and, and, and they draw power from it. When you're making it, everyone is into it and, and together and believes in it, but you don't see that power until it hits the audiences and you see someone cry or laugh or you know have uh, have a topic of conversation come out of it you don't see that power yeah. so it's kind of almost like you're in the eye of the storm while it's being made um <laughs> and, then, and you come out the other end and you see this amazing thing happen yeah. um and also the, the thing that you don't often see um that we would see is the the power that it has on 
the writer and the filmmaker um, mm. because this has been inside of them for so long and it means something to them, uh, particularly the stories that we like to champion, the stories from communities that aren't often heard. Um, yeah. And you see that it's almost kind of, I don't want to be cliche or, or, or cheesy, but it's transformative to that individual yeah. to, to kind of make a film and get that message out there. So yeah, seeing yeah. all of that is just, it's a beautiful thing. I think that's so true. Like, firstly, the way that you sound, you made it kind of sound in your description is like it is almost like they are birthing something from something that comes conceptualized within. And then it will take a village to nurture this baby into being this fully fledged, you know, manifestation of wonder in terms of when the message gets out. And in that process, everybody who gets involved, the writer, the people that then are kind of appointed to kind of help uh, realize the vision in whichever capacity they can there is more than just it's not just a linear interaction isn't it there is such yeah. a relationship between all of of that in that process which doesn't this is why I keep saying it's not a small or a mild undertaking <laughs> because you, it becomes like this massive moving but very alive thing um, and yes. the work into it, the emotional investment, the psychology about it, not to mention, obviously, business and finances for it to actually give it stay in the sun is another, you know, uh, dimension to and you will never be an eye in it as well. And yeah. I guess this leads to my next question in terms of how do you feel that that space is kind of evolving? I know this is a big passion of yourself and your organization, but from where you've started and now you're kind of in the running of like you're, you're, you're proactively someone who's behind the driving seat of change. How have you seen it evolved during your time within this space? Um, it's evolved in a way that I am not a great fan of. Um, I think the film and the difficulty with the film industry is for a long time. It's been like the Wild West. Everyone is doing their own thing. It, a lot of it is not necessarily regulated. The data mm. that comes out or the statistics or the information that comes out isn't accurate. In You just cannot get um, accurate information because of the nature of the industry. It's a lot of freelance work. It's a lot of let's do it now. Let's get it done. Uh, time, money pressures, etc. So the th thought of on top of all of that, being inclusive and diverse often gets pushed to the bottom. And if you think if you're a freelance um, producer, for example, that is responsible for making sure that the crew is um, diverse and the cast is diverse, et cetera, but you're working with a huge organization, um, a huge production company, for example, mm -hmm. on a really great production, and you've got a week to get it prepared, and then you start shooting, et cetera, all of the diversity kind of goes out the window, which is not an excuse, mm. but it's um, it just shows the level of how much needs to change within the industry because it is pushed down so much. And I think mm. BLM 2020, like at every industry, it was like, well, we need to get, you know, we need to be seen to be diverse. We need to get this crew, that crew. We need um, these people seen. And what happened in the film industry is that all bubbled to the surface. So on the surface, what the audience see, extremely diverse. I mean, I've seen some amazing black British films, TV programs, um, uh, directors, producers, etc. come out of, you know, the drive for diversity after BLM. Um, but when you walk on the set and you look at um, in the lighting department, in the camera department, in catering, etc., everything is pretty much the same. Um, it's moving at a much slower rate than you see because directors, actors, producers, everyone sees them. The you know the, when a film is released, the whole world sees those people. So it's like right, you've got a black um, director, a female um, writer, etc. We've done our job. But if you walked on the set, I think you'd be shocked at the lack of diversity still. So what we tackle at Hatch Films is um those kind of those kind of roles so when you walk on set the electricians the carpenters the art mm -hmm. department the um, runners etc how we look at how diverse those are um so i feel like the industry has met the film industry has made strides to uh, on the surface but mm -hmm. below it is it is still the wild west and it's still really kind of um 
behind. Um, people are taking note. So there are people that will take note. And one thing that we always say when we talk to bigger production companies is let us stop trying to do it yourself and let us do it. You know, the um, for so long, you've ignored these people. All of a sudden, you've put a focus on these people. They don't necessarily trust you. Your brand might be a trusted, respected brand within a certain demographic, but you've got to realize, is that is it still trusted and respected in the demographic that you're trying to reach? Probably not because you've ignored them for so long. So yeah. you need to put your ego aside and realize you might not be the best in the best position to do this work yourself. So come to Hatch Films, come to the other organizations that do it well, that are trusted by the communities, um, that do actively support them every single day and know what we're talking about and listen um, and trust us to do that and help you along the way. Don't put in a huge scheme aimed at diversity, ask black people to apply, and then you get 10,000 people apply and you're choosing five of them to work in your organization. It's just not, it just doesn't work. Um, it just does not work because also you've got to think when they get there, what are they gonna, what are they gonna meet? How are they gonna sustain yeah. their career? What environment are they coming into? Have you really prepared um, to make it inclusive, to build equity, or are you just shoving them in um, and letting them sink or swim? So the industry is moving at a slow rate. Is <laughs> the very no, short answer to your question. I'm very sure. <laughs> it was such a great answer. I think incredibly comprehensive on, on issues that I think really all need to be considered. And even though we're speaking specifically about the film industry, that that's kind of in your remit, in, in some of the conversations that we shared with others in very different fields, it's the same kind of issue. We've got, you know, there's a visibility of the appearance sometimes of perhaps ticking the boxes, but are we actually cultivating or, or kind of fostering environments that encourage a level of sustainability this should be the norm this is mm. this should be changing for long term not i've done it this one time and you can see that it's visible to the public view but whoever then joins this workforce like you said do they feel like this is a trusted or a safe space for them that where their talent is going to be valued where they are going to be valued and what they're contributing to this space is going to be valued and and having a presence of like oh i can see that there is advocacy there by companies like yours and your organization and others like you are trying to kind of be that middleman or, or be the mediator to help yes. in, in that direction. I, I guess my question would be like, from your view, what do you think that it should look like? You have a much wider, broader, deeper insight as to actually what we who are the civilian consumers of film see we just see what we're, we're what's given to us in public media on the final screen the polished um you know promotion etc cetera, etc cetera. from your point of view like if there's genuine diversity and inclusion as a culture and environment within film what should that look like in your view it really should look like that. Um, so if we take i try to be very specific when i'm talking about the different demographics because like most industries with film, there are intersections, there are, yeah. you know, there, there's whole different dynamics. So if I took, for example, um, talent from the global majority, I would want them to be able to walk or apply or um, work on any production, could be a period drama, could be a corporate video, could be a high-end TV show, could be a blockbuster film, anything and feel like they belong working on that um, on that production. What I don't want to happen, which we see often, particularly in film, is, okay, we're going to do this diversity thing. So we're going to have a black, it's going to be a black-led film with mm -hmm. the all-black cast, the all-black crew, um, all-black this and all-black that. That is amazing. And that has, that is important work that's happening. Um, and there are organizations that push for that, and that is incredible. But we don't want that, uh, we don't want that to be the only thing that that crew can go on to do is an all black thing. Um, it needs to be, it needs to be, like I say, they walk on the set of um, Downton Abbey, for example, and don't feel like I'm the only one here. Um, this is a British, a white British kind of production. Mm. Who am I to be? It's that, it's, 
it's it's really that basic um to be honest it's it's your skill needs to open doors for you um and i think for the film industry it's very um nepotism is is a huge kind of issue within the film industry generally um but these people need to um this talent that is being ignored needs to have access to mm. those people if nepotism is something that is going to live on in the film industry like bring bring those people in and i always say like hatch films and other organizations like us are now the people you know that will bring you in um so so yeah a perfect industry or not perfect but an industry that's mm. um progressing in the right direction for me is yeah. is when you see that diversity across all different types of productions not just funneling people down yeah. a production or a, working on a story that represents their community only um yeah. that's that's kind of the way I look at it yeah I, I I think it's such a great um description of of an over of a I think a really inspiring aspiration for what that should look like and I agree with you in so many ways I I, I do wonder in your in kind of like your engagements with as we mentioned, you're, you're kind of the middle person, the, the gateway between trying to create or mediate between those that are young, aspiring talent that want to break into the world of film. Do you, fa do you find in your experience from the narratives that you encounter from this, these pools of, of diverse talent, is there kind of a, are they, are they enthusiastic to get involved with film? Is it actually kind of like a world that that those that that uh, come from the backgrounds and demographics and representation groups that you you work so strongly with, do you find that there is enthusiasm to get in there, or more like reticence? What is the general vibe that you find in in in, in the work that you're doing, which is really trying to bridge that gap? Mm. Always uh, from the talent, always enthusiasm. Like this is Amazing. like we won't sugarcoat it. Working in film is like a dream job for people. Um, it's it's something that people come to us passionate about. No one ever really comes to us and is kind of so-so um, about it. It's always, this is, this is what I want to do. Um, what we try then to do is open their eyes to all of the different things mm -hmm. that are involved in film to try and help, because we know not everyone's going to be a director, for example. Not everyone is going to be uh, a writer and have their film made not everyone is going to be you know the top you know the top tier talent as they would they would call it but there's so many other things accountants hairdressers makeup artists uh catering like there's so many other things that go on in the film industry that your neighbors could be working in the film industry you might never hear their name or understand their name but it'll be there somewhere in the credits of the film because they make a living from you know working in the film industry um so I, we always get that, always, always get that passion. What we do get, which is great, but on the flip side is a shame, is we will always get, again, I'll take the, the example of global maturity or black talent, is um, I want to work on Top Boy. I want to work on this show. And it's, uh, I want to be like Michaela Cole. Amazing for inspiration. <coughs> but the reality yeah. is those people are, unicorns as i would call them in the industry <laughs> they are people that have managed to you know managed to break through they've got amazing talent but it's not the norm so it's mm. not um you know it's not the norm in that in in the industry wow. so mm. we work towards that but also i believe it's important that these young people understand all of the opportunity that they have um or could have within the industry not just i want to be michaela cole i want to direct top boy i want to be you know, working with John Boyega or whoever it is, um, because that's what that's what they're presented with. You know, yeah. it's um, so yeah. I think it's really important that we open their eyes to everything that they can achieve in the industry, rather than just having this one track um, that they've been presented with. Um, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And I think, like you said, that it's important to have you know, big aspirations and role models to follow, but having a realistic kind of like going with your eyes open. And I think the more and more that um, individuals and organizations like the one you represent is doing the groundwork of what environment you're going to look forward to, how you're going to make this as a long-term living 
in an, in an environment that fosters inclusion of you and what you bring and that your skill leads the way is, is such an important element to to kind of engage with anyone that's up and coming. And that's certainly kind of an approach we try to do in terms of preparing young people going from education spaces into the workplace because yeah. it's it's that whole let's get let's get ourselves prepared for it. So we're dealing less with you know the symptomatic issues or the fruit. We can get to the root of it because we've got young people prepared to actually create and and continue reproducing the norm that we're aspiring to. Yeah. I would say yeah. like what I wanted to kind of like kind of get into as we're kind of coming to a bit of a close is we've we've mentioned about how DNI can actually come across as a little bit like tick boxing and to the visible face of the rest of the public we are looking like we are um affirming or we are kind of um taking charge of really trying to meet the needs of, of the DNI you know demand but actually that DNI is really about the real life experiences of the individuals that are exp- that are living in the marginalized space that are not represented where they should be, or it's not an equal place that feels like an environment that is inclusive. And and I wondered, like, is do you have your own story with this, which drives you so much on behalf of so many other young people? Um, <clears throat> yeah, I suppose I have. Well, I could go on and on and on about this. <laughs> <laughs> and we are here for it. <laughs> <laughs> about the things look I um you know I talked about the industry that I was in before and there are a few moments that really stand out to me um mm. but kind of I so I was a I suppose you would call it a middle manager I was a manager but of of kind of a team of people and then I took on the responsibility of managing the team of people sort of the department and sort of the whole building um, Mm -hmm. at one stage. And um, someone came in, it was a contractor that came in and poked his head in the office and asked um, to speak to Robert. Of course, that's me. (laughs) So um, the team pointed down to me and he took one look at me and he said, oh, it must be someone else. I'm looking for the manager. So to me, to my all white team, it was like funny, you know, ha ha that you know he is the manager um but to me I knew exactly exactly why you know he had that response I could pinpoint it I was um I've been at that job I was uh, mistaken for the cleaner mistaken for the security guard mistaken for the intern um everything but the manager of the team so and that really kind of sums up to me um this difficulty that people have with um, when we talk about diversity, equity, inclusion, etc., is some of it you just need to shut up and listen. Some of it is not like you can't hold up something tangible and say, look, he did this, so it means this, and yeah. it means that. Sometimes you have to sit back. There's no process or policy or uh, tick box. You need to sit back and actually listen to the lived experience of these yeah. people and understand why that might have an impact. It doesn't mean you then go and fire everybody that has said something wrong. You know, it, it just means you need to listen and um, see what you can do within the context of your own workplace. I think there's a real, um, a particularly within in positions that I've been in before, there's a real kind of knee-jerk reaction to, um, to do something about it because we don't want to be seen to doing this. And sometimes that reaction is um, defensiveness. Sometimes that reaction is kind of just dramatic and ridiculous. Um, There needs to be somewhere in between. It needs to be kind of a real listen to understand. Um, And that is what I've lacked in my career, that listening to understand. And that really led me to being the one that wants to listen. So then I can, we always say um, with Hatch Films, it always needs to be flexible because what they need today in two weeks time, it might not be what they need. They might need something different, something in the industry or the world has changed. So they might need different support. So this kind of need to have everything written down in a process and be tangible is really kind of need to rip it up sometimes. Mm. Um, And then, so that was kind of my experience for, for work. And then, um, 
one day so I've got two boys and I've always thought about what they're going to do when they grow up how are they going to navigate the world what they're going to be what they want to do as work and often I thought actually if they want to work in film great because you know (laughs) I can I can help with them with that but then I really want them to at the same time as a parent I want them to um, have the tools to navigate the difficulties in life, um, the difficulties that they may may face as a um, as young black men um, or young black boys, and then one day at the age of my eldest was six, and we picked him up from school, me and my wife, and we were driving. We got to the car, strapped in, and these two boys came cycling up to. We had our windows open. It was in the summer. They came cycling up to the car, and. One of them didn't see the car, so he slammed on his brakes. We weren't moving, it, we were static. Slammed on his brakes and he shouted, watch the, and he, they said the N-words, straight into the car with my six-year-old. And my six-year-old doesn't know, he, he doesn't miss a trick, as people would say. So I thought, you know, he didn't hear. I got really, you know, angry and, and frustrated. He, I thought he didn't hear. And on the way back, he just said, what does mean Mean, yeah so then that was the door open then so for me I that really kind of drove me towards you know what this is um this I don't want him to face this or have have an additional burden to tackle as he goes as he grows up and moves into his career I want him to know now what's coming so not to limit his um thoughts or aspirations but I see it as giving him the lottery numbers these this is what you're this is what you could face this is what happens in the world so let's think about how you if that does happen to you how you move around it let's think about that now so when you encounter it you don't spend weeks or months or years thinking how do I do it what do I do and it doesn't throw you so um so and with Hatch Films I want the people that we train and that we um develop and support to know the hurdles that they could face within the industry. It shouldn't be a secret to them. So when they get to it, they think, right, I know how to navigate that. Let's jump over that hurdle and move on to the next thing so I can be great in my career, et cetera, et cetera. So that's kind of my kind of, yeah, story in a in a roundabout way. And that's, that's, very, that's why I do what I do. But very, very, I think, pertinent and important kind of like those are landmarks in the journey isn't it mm-hmm. these are the things that, that that drive us and I love what you said about you know it's it's how that kind of is even approached even as we're educating young people about this is what the world could look like and here are the means in terms of either shattering those ceilings or finding ways to navigate it still holding on to your humanity is such a fine line and again not yeah. an easy undertaking because we got it could go two ways we could either be fostering like be fearful of the world out there rather than I am here to dominate the world is it ready for me and that kind of confidence and that's what we want everybody to feel in the spaces that they they feel called to occupy and I respect that so much Robert it's just been an absolute pleasure to to hear your story and your insight I think we need more individuals like you in the creative space I, I I feel like the creative space is very, very lucky to have you Um, you. as an advocate. (laughs) It is. And because this is no easy feat. Um, And what I love is like your journey has come from very different spaces to where you are now, but nothing has been wasted. It clearly has prepared you for the platform that you're occupying now and being someone who is inspiring others, role modeling for others, and also being a, a safe space that gateways others into their next step. Is a, is a huge privilege and I think it should be respected. So thank you so thank much you. for sharing uh, your work with us today and we'll be sure to be following your work. Uh, please look at the uh, details underneath the caption of this podcast and you can catch Robert and, and follow his work on LinkedIn and um, Hatch Films and all of the work that they're endeavouring to do. Thank you so much thank for being with much. us today, Robert. Take thank care. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Thanks.